Our company today are two candidates who ran great campaigns but ultimately came up a little bit short in their races. Marilyn's Kim Klasek, who Tom Emmer was just mentioning, and Florida's Anna Polina Luda. Ladies, welcome. So glad to have you. And sorry for the loss, but excited to see what you're going to do in the future. And I want to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to hear what you learned. What was your experience running? What would you have done differently? If anything, Kim, I'll start with you. Yeah, so I learned a lot. You know, I was so thankful for our, our viral campaign ad because I think that took us to another level. Um, obviously, we raised, million, raised millions of dollars because of it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we went into this not really knowing what to expect. You know, it's a plus 30 Democrat district. Uh, we knew we had to flip so many minds, you know, independents and Democrats. And so, you know, we had a special election back in April, and we did only 3,100 votes in Baltimore City. But you fast forward six months later to our general election, and we flipped 13,000 votes in Baltimore City. So there are people that are changing their minds, and I'm just going to keep going forward. That's awesome. Anna, how about you? What would you maybe do differently? What was your experience? Um, I'd have to say definitely there is an emphasis on targeting with digital media. And I'd have to say that with the way that we actually wrote our script or even um, some of the mailers that you send out, there's a way to do it to kind of draw people in. And you think about the election fatigue that happens to everyone's brain the closer that you get to election day. So things that actually can break through that noise. I found that actually sending out funny videos um, and even messaging on the ads that, that actually worked better. So in the future, I'm not saying when, but I definitely will be running again. And I will say that we are definitely going to be getting a little bit earlier so we can bring in some more money, but I'm very excited about it and continue to fight in Washington, D.C. I, you know, both of you ran very impressive races. Um, Kim, to your point, you increased the vote share in a 30-plus district. That's unbelievably impressive. And Anna, I, I looked at your numbers. You ran against Charlie Chris. He's a former governor, statewide candidate. Multiple times he ran for the Senate. Um, he's got a ton of name ID and raises a ton of money, and your finish was very, very impressive. So hats off to both of you guys. The interesting thing is, though, I, I'd like to know what advice. If, if a first-time candidate came to you right now and said, I'm thinking of running for Congress in the next cycle, Kim, what's the piece of advice that you would give them? Yeah, so when I first said I wanted to run, everyone said, okay, well, you got to be prepared to throw in $100,000 of your own money. And I was like, what? No way. I don't have it. You know, and I think it scares people when you think about big money in politics. But as Anna was saying, you know, social media, that's what we can use nowadays, especially these young, fresh faces. We know exactly how social media works. Uh, we raised $3.2 million off our campaign ad within 72 hours. And we didn't do ad buys. You know, we only put it on social media. So I would say advice-wise, just go for it. Don't think about the money. You'll make it in the long run. Anna, how about you? Definitely same thing. Do not put your own money in. Raise it. It's a lot of hard work, but you can do it. I actually ended up raising all the money for my. We we you a little, I think you you. That's amazing. Kim, Kim, was most of your money, um, Kim, was most of your money raised in big donors or was it all like small donors giving money online? Yeah, it was all small donors, Sean. We had over 110,000 donors across the country. Um, you know, and that didn't really count all the people that sent checks to our post, our P.O. box, you know. So we had a lot of people that just were like, look, you know, we really believe in changing Baltimore and a lot of inner cities across the country. I think there's no um, secret that a lot of the unrest that we see across this country happens in Democrat controlled cities. And I think there's a lot of people that just wants to make that change. Yeah. You know, we heard Tom Emmer talk about we asked him what the plan was moving forward, if if the House would be taken over by Republicans in 2022. And he's very confident, as many, many others are. What is your plan moving forward? Are you going to run again? What are we going to see from you? Yeah. So we still have two two million dollars in the bank. We didn't spend everything. Wow. Uh, so we do plan to run again. And uh, right now I'm thinking about working with uh, local news uh, outlets. And then, of course, Benny Johnson has a huge plan uh, to take this on the road, basically, to fight corruption across the country. So I'm excited to do that. Yeah, um, so Tom Emmer specifically, as you saw in that ad, called you out. Yeah. He said, we want Kim Klasik <laughs> involved, right? That's a pretty big piece of praise coming from the chairman of the National Republican Congressional Committee. Um, so the first question is, you know, do you want to be involved with their efforts? And if so, do you have any idea how? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my plan right now is to make sure that my opponent wished he never won. 
Uh, we're going to be following every federal dollar that comes into the Maryland's District 7. Uh, we're going to really put the heat on everybody in Congress. You know, people want them to uh, represent them down on Capitol Hill. And that's something that Congress has not been doing. As we know, that second stimulus bill is still sitting there. There are people in need. Um, so we got to, you know, put the heat on Congress. And I don't mind speaking up. Uh, so I'll be ready to fight. If they need me, I'm in. Kim, one of the things that you brought up that I just want to touch on is when I talk to folks so many times, they say, well, the party didn't do this and the party didn't do this. Kim Klasik, you raised $3 million on your own because you had a message and an amazing video. Like, what is your, if, when you hear someone like that say it, what is your response? Yeah, so the, and that was $3 million in the first 72 hours. You know, we ended up topping out at $7.8 million. <laughs> <laughs> so my advice, I mean, honestly, it's you just don't give up. You know, we fought so hard. I had a great team. I had so many great volunteers. Again, there were people that support us across the country. We had people phone begging for us uh, in Washington State. You know, there were so many people that were just like, look, we need you. There, You know, the silent majority is there. Um, and if I can be that mouthpiece for them, then, hey, I'm right there for them. Wow. Kim, as Sean said, hats off to you and Ana Polina Luna as well. We lost her due to some technical difficulties, but excited to see you guys stay involved and look forward to having you back again soon. Thank you. I appreciate it.